All right, Ragbrai newbies. This is going to be the 101 crash course. I'm going to try and make this as concise as possible. Um, I did Ragbrai for the first time in 2021. Um, learned a lot, and um, I know like everyone on the group has so many questions, and I'm hoping I can just kind of make a concise video that will answer a bunch of questions. And leave a comment be below if you have a suggestion or uh, a life tip for uh, riding across Iowa. So I'm going to try and uh, consolidate this as much as possible, but there's a ton of information, so it's not going to be super short, but I'm going to try and make this concise. All right, so 101, rag rye. First things first, got to have a bike. So let's go outside and go take a look at the bike I purchased. You want to get a bike fit for actually making sure that your bike is fit to you so that things are proportional when you're leaning over on the bars um, and that your seat's at the right height. You can see here it's adjustable up and down, but you also want to get, make sure you're getting a frame that is your size. Don't go and buy a random bike thinking that you can just get the seat and everything adjusted. This is a 56 centimeter bike. So uh, basically that's kind of like an average size. So if you're small, you want to get a smaller size bike like between a 50 inch to, they're not inch, 50 to 54 centimeter. Mediums typically like 54 to 58. And then anything above 58 is kind of a larger size frame. You can also get bikes that come in a small, medium, large, and extra large frame, like Giant and different brands. They kind of go by that too. So just make sure you know the right size of the frame that you're buying as well as your bike. So very important if you're very new to this and you have not bought a bike yet. Um, this again is a 56 um, centimeter frame, uh, about a medium in size. Uh, Trek Madone 5.5, um, brand new back in 2009. It would have been like a $3,500 bike. Like I said, I got it for about 900 bucks. So don't buy used, or don't buy new. Sorry, you can buy used all you want. Um, let's see what else. What do I have on my bike? Um, you want to make sure that you have puncture resistant tires. Highly recommend the Continental Gator Skins. These are great tires. I did not have one flat on my first Ragbri, uh, knock on wood. Now I also know that I just got lucky, um, but these are great puncture resistant tires and you wanna make sure that you're getting fresh ones put on prior to Ragbri. Um, so if you've been training in these, that's great, but I put a fresh set on just so that everything was in the best shape as possible. Um, you wanna have a couple bike bags. So I have one here. I have one here. This has my nutrition stuff in it, and you don't need to bring much on Ragbri, but maybe like one or two clip blocks. Um, I have a couple of the goos. I like the um, chocolate outrage ones. They are just a good flavor. They don't taste amazing when it's 100 degrees outside, so um, you know it's up to you what flavor you like, but those work well for me. But you only need to bring a couple because you're going into towns um, and they have just a ton of food, so don't feel like you got to pack these full. Uh, one thing that is important that I do recommend is making sure you have a battery backup. So what I do is I put this inside the bag, and I actually have my phone right there, and I have it charged up, and that way I never have to worry about my battery uh, going dead. One, if you're tracking your mileage, and two, if you want to be able to get a uh, hold of whoever's uh, helping you if you're out uh, so they, they can, you know, get a hold of you and you can get a hold of them. Some people don't like their phones on their um, bikes. I get that. Um, I do like keeping mine mounted there, um, but you obviously want to have your phone on you in case uh, there's a problem. Um, and let's see what else. Definitely get your bike tuned up. Yes, it is important. Uh, I learned, uh, you know, that uh, taking to the uh, actual Trek store and having them do proper um, gear adjustments and everything made a world of distance and added to the reliability um, and just my peace of mind when I was out on the bike. So yes, definitely get your bike tuned up about three weeks prior so that you can get a few rides in and make sure everything's right. And if not, you know, go back out to the whatever store, your local bike shop, and have them tweak a couple things if you just feel like things are still not quite right. Um, water bottles obviously um and another thing related to the nutrition you can get a couple of uh just the packets of uh you know it's the equivalent of like a 
Gatorade or something where you can just add the um, powder into these just to give you a little uh, bit of electric light, just things like that. Um, these are insulated bottles I got off Amazon by Polar Bottle. These are good, but make sure you have plenty of water. You'll have plenty of opportunities to stop in all the towns and lots of pit stops along the way. Um, but when you have an opportunity to refill your water, refill your water because you will go through a lot of water, or you should be. You should be drinking as much water as possible um, when you're doing a 70, 80 mile day, um, which you'll be doing repeatedly for a week. Um, and that's about it for the bikes. Um, again, this is kind of the, the, the worst part to me is the bike seat. I still haven't found the perfect bite seat. Don't go and get like a padded um, seat that's real cushiony, that's like a recliner. You will chafe and just have all sorts of problems down below. It sounds amazing when you're going to do a long ride in theory, but you want a seat that is proportional to your backside. So that's another um, thing that goes along with the bike fit is making sure that you have a seat fit. Um, they will tell you kind of the width of uh, your butt bones, your tail bones. Um, and recommend the sizing for your seats. And it's really just gonna be up to you. I've gone through about four or five seats and I like this one, but still at the end of, by the third day, I was putting Desitin on my butt. So, and um, I highly recommend that too. The maximum strength Desitin in the purple uh, container goes a long way. So I was borrowing my uh, my toddlers for, the, for our last Ragbri. Um, so it, it just has to do with the length of time that you're on the bike repeatedly day after day for a week. I, I don't think you can escape it. I haven't really heard of anyone that has a perfect solution to that. Down. Um, transportation, getting to Ragbri. Um, I am recording this in our RV, which we purchased about three years ago prior to the pandemic. Uh, my friends made fun of, we, fun of us uh, when we bought it, but uh, turned out it was a pretty good um, choice when the pandemic hit because we had lots to do and places to go with the ability to stay uh, socially distanced and all that good stuff. So, not everyone is going to have this luxury of an RV. So, our case when it comes to transportation is a little bit unique. But I'll briefly state, if you're renting an RV or have an RV, it's obviously the way to do RAGBRAI. Um, if you have the ability to shower at the end of every day, mainly, and have a conditioned space to sleep in, whew, it's, uh, it really makes your life a million times easier. Otherwise, you're going to be going to be um, getting like Pork Belly Ventures or one of the companies that if you're going solo, they basically take your stuff to each town, overnight town each time. And you can either pay to have them set up your tent or you can set up your own tent or you can go super hardcore and just carry all your bags on your bike and just be doing this the hardcore way every night. There's not really any suggestion I have for that besides like you're crazy and you're awesome. Um, if you're doing the, uh, the RV way, it's great. My wife and three boys come along with us. Um, well, they did for last year and they will for this year as well. Uh, they're obviously your team. They're your moral support. So don't bite their head off when you're exhausted and tired. I might know from experience, just saying. Um, and again, from the RV standpoint, if you want to condition space, uh, there is no hookups on any of the nights unless you book a campground uh, prior to RAGBRAI. And by the announcement, a few days later, typically the campgrounds are all booked up for uh, the week of uh, the last week in July. So just kind of keep that in mind. So if you're going to do a campground so you can guarantee that you have hookups, book it earlier rather than later. Uh, most likely, if not, you're going to be boondocking. When you register, you want to register your RV or whatever vehicle you're taking uh, so that you have a guaranteed spot to park somewhere in the town. You don't necessarily have to have it, but it it's, makes your life a whole lot easier at the end of the day because you're guaranteed a place to park, um, and that's designated for the RVs. Um, make sure your generator is working and in proper order. Ours broke down on us like on the second or third night, and it was off and on finicky, and when it's not working, then you don't have uh, your air conditioning in the coach part. Um, and you don't really want to leave your engine running all night to run your uh, motor AC. So that's my suggestion when it comes to RV. Moving on. When you get to Ragbri, um, the first day is like the expo. It's awesome. You know, tons of uh, food trucks and vendors and just the camaraderie of it all um, and the anticipation. You can just kind of feel the hype in the air. Um, it, it's great. So enjoy that. Um, have fun. 
it is a perfect opportunity to have your bike looked at one last time if there's anything that you're even slightly worried about. Um, the night before, or the two, two evenings before the ride, I uh, got something stuck in my spokes on accident, and I had to take it over to one of the many vendors. There's there's a ton. I thought, like, for sure there would only be, like, two vendors, and I would be panicking that there would be, like, massive lines. But there's really quite a few bike repair shops um, the night before and all throughout the race. On each overnight town, and even in some of the in-between towns, there's uh, bike repair guys, or even on the side of the road. So, fortunately, I didn't have any major hiccups, but it didn't seem as overwhelming as I thought it would be with everyone trying to get their bike um, uh, tweaked out. So, um, just don't panic as much about that. So, riding the actual rag ride. Um, before you hop on your bike, um, very early in the morning, which I recommend you doing, I started each day at about 6 a.m., check your tire pressure. Tire pressure should be done every single morning. Um, if your max PSI on your road bike tires is 120, I had mine filled to around 110 or so. You want them pretty firm because less rolling resistance means that you're going to have an easier day. So uh, you want every single advantage that you can get. So you want to keep your tires inflated every night. Don't just assume the same amount of PSI is going to be available to you every morning because um, you filled them up a couple days before the ride. It, it can drop 10, 20 PSI overnight. Temperature changes affect it. So just top off your tires every morning and make sure you're familiar with how to pump up your tires if you're not uh, used to doing that. Um, you want to use a manual pump because a, a, a battery powered or one that you plug into a 12 volt um, outlet is going to just probably pump it up too fast and you run the risk of puncturing your tire or making it pop. Um, so make sure you start your morning inflating your tires. Now you're on the road. You're riding along. Uh, this is your first year. So stay to the right. I don't care if you're like some veteran rider. Um, the first day especially... Stay to the right and just kind of get a feel for everything, at least for the couple, first couple hours. If you want to start passing people, pop, fine. But uh, my average speed that I ride is like between 12 and 14 miles an hour. So I'm very kind of middle of the road, but I just always kind of stay to the right. Passed as needed if there was someone really moving slow. But don't be a speed demon. One, you're missing out on like the whole point of rag ride and just kind of soaking in all the beauty of um, these towns that you'll travel through. Um but, but two, you run the risk of either creating an accident or getting into an accident yourself. Um, it, it's just not worth it. So if you can, stay to the right and make sure you're using all of your audible uh, signals. Passing left, passing right, um, getting off, you know, things like that. You'll see on Ragbride just how much verbal communication there is among everyone. Everyone's talking the whole time. Right or off, right or on. Make sure you do that. It's not just a gimmick. It's for the safety of everyone. So make sure you're stating your intentions prior to doing them so that the riders around you are good to go. Um, you're going to hit a town between every 8 to 10 miles. Um, so you take a break. Um, check out the town because each town goes through a lot to get picked for Ragbri and to actually do Ragbri. Um, and, and they put so much work into hosting for you and for everyone there. And there's a million riders going through. So have a little patience. It's going to be congested and clogged, but the day spreads out. Um, so pick up that piece of pie, um, check your bike over, make sure everything's looking good. You're feeling good. Drink tons of water, um, get a chocolate milk, whatever you need to kind of boost your energy back up, but don't overdo it. Don't throw down like six, 700 calories. Um, in each town, you're going to end up gaining weight over the week uh, versus uh, hopefully losing a little weight um, or just maintaining an equal. Um, don't bring a ton of food on your bike because you really don't need it. Um, bring 25 bucks, 20 bucks, and that will really cover you throughout the day. Um, it did just fine for me. Um, you can bring a little more if you want, but typically around 20 to 25 dollars should do you um, just fine to get you some food. When you're riding, the weather is going to be unpredictable. I was very fortunate in 2021. Um, we had some really hot days, but we never had a rainy day, and we never had a day with horrible headwinds. Uh, headwinds are typically the number one uh, killer for just ruining your day and exhausting you out. Um, so 
hopefully that doesn't happen. That's why they go west to east, because typically I guess that gives you a tailwind, but it's not always that way. That way. Um, and also it, it could rain at any time. There could be inclement weather. There could be really bad weather where they have to cancel a day. I don't think it's ever happened or it doesn't happen hardly ever, but you know, tornadoes happen in Iowa, especially on these really um, balmy, super hot summer days when the weather can be crazy. So keep that in mind. Dress appropriately. Um, speaking of clothes, uh, I highly recommend bibs over the padded shorts. The bibs will feel so much more comfortable when you're wearing them because they're not riding right around at your waist, no pun intended. Um, they kind of sit up higher and it's all one piece. So I learned that the bibs make your life a whole lot easier. I also recommend you getting different brands of bibs because you don't want the same kind of cut um, for your padding on each day consecutively. Otherwise, you're just going to wear out that area of your skin and you're going to have some gnarly rashes, um, hopefully no open wounds or anything like that. But you kind of remember like you're really putting uh, uh, a lot on your on your butt um, and the skin there. It's very sensitive. Chamois butter, obviously. Um, you want to have that on every day prior to your ride. Uh, you can apply it to your skin directly or put it onto the seat or on the inside of your um, your bib or your shorts um, on the chamois part. So you want to make sure you apply that on there. You don't need a real thick coat, but make sure that it's um, enough that's going to cover you. And then bring a little bottle. They sell those at Ragbri all along the towns too. Um, so if it starts to feel like you're chafing down there or just feeling uncomfortable, Add a new layer of lubrication. So anything that's going to make your day a little bit easier. Training for RAGBRAI. Number one tip is just, it's really simple, but it's really hard, is to follow the David Ertl training guide that is on the RAGBRAI website. It's easy because he spells it out for you 100%. Uh, what to do, how long you should be riding for to build up your mileage and get you ready for RAGBRAI. Hard part is following it uh, week after week, but you should do your best to follow those miles up to the end. I think the last week is the only week that I really didn't meet the goal, but I had done about 1,200 miles. I think the goal is always to do, he recommends about 1,000 miles at least, in training preparation prior to Rag Bride to make it enjoyable. I will say that I saw some people, our first day was something like 81 miles, and I saw some people that were obviously unprepared and halfway through the day, they were like wrecked. Um, I was amazed at how good I felt after day one. And I knew if I could handle that day, I was good to go for the week. So day one is crucial. It will make all the difference in the world in your mental game. It gives you like the idea of what to expect. And David Ertl's guide is your number one source for what to do with training. Just follow it. Get those miles in. It's not about speed. It's just about the endurance and getting your butt ready to be sitting on a seat for six to eight hours every day for a week. So it's as basic as that. That is my training recommendation. Um, get out there and ride. Find the trails that work for you. Get a bike rack on the back of your car so you can change it up and go someplace else. But go find a ride. Go find the trails that are long, 20, 40, 50, 60 miles. Um, you know, one that's 30 miles and 30 miles back. Figure out your schedule so you can find the time to do it. Um, it it's hard when you're uh, an adult, when you have obligations of work and family and all that stuff. But um, if you're going to do rag bri, you've got to commit to uh, putting in the mileage. Otherwise, you're really going to be in for a rough re week and you will not make it. I mean, that's it's as simple as that. I, I don't see how you can possibly make it. If you did, you will be suffering like no other. A rag bri is hard, but it is fun. But if you go in prepared, it's more enjoyable than it is hard. Um, oh, when you're out there riding, do not stress if you get a flat tire or your chain pops off and things like that. You should familiarize yourself with how to change a flat tire. Um, go on YouTube and watch a couple videos and maybe practice. But the Air Force cycling team is out riding uh, with everybody and they're mixed out among the groups. Um, you know, hopefully you, I always try and ride near one if I can, if they're not going too fast. Um, because if you have a breakdown, 
Um, if you're not riding your one right then and there, they'll see you within the next five or 10 minutes. They will pull over and they will give you a hand and they will get you back on the road. Um, it is the most relieving thing in the entire world. So be extremely thankful for the Air Force cycling team and keep an eye out for them when they're, you're on the road. You'll see them quite a bit. And if you see them at one of the overnight towns, give them a thank you. So that's really it. I have my little checklist here of uh, things I wanted to recommend. And uh, I'm missing a ton, I'm sure. But overall, pay the money to get a decent bike. I do not recommend you take a mountain bike or a city bike or any of those. If you've already bought it, cool, train on that and, and do it. But if you haven't bought a bike yet or you're not committed to the bike that you're using, I highly recommend that you get a road bike because it will just make your life easier. It gives you hand position options. It's going to be lighter weight and you'll just be a lot better on the road um, with a, a bike like that. Don't spend thousands of dollars, but if you can get a decent one for a thousand bucks or under, or maybe a little more, um, it's worth the investment uh, for when you're training and for when you're actually out riding. Uh, when it comes to shoes, totally up to you. Um, I have the clip-in shoes and there is a huge learning curve with that. But once you get used to them, um, you know, practice in the grass, just leaning up against a pole or something and just kind of standing on it, unclipping and clipping in. Um, it will make your life easier having the clip-in shoes because when you're doing the hills, you're kind of pushing and pulling when you're going through your revolutions. So um, it does help, but you need to be very comfortable with popping out when you need to. I've fallen a few times. You're going to fall a few times, um, but the clip-in shoes are definitely a good recommendation. All right, so that's it for uh, the Ragbri 101. Hopefully this is helpful to you and if you have a question below just leave a comment and i'll reply back to you and uh, give you my best advice um, again i've only done this for one year but i learned a lot um, and i think this year for 2022 it's going to be a pretty difficult ride um, very hilly but again quickest tips get yourself a solid used bike train on that bike make sure it fits you make sure you get a proper fitting it is worth it to go to the bike shop and have that done um, Bring a little bit of nutrition with you. Nothing major, though, because all the towns will have you covered. And um, most importantly, just follow David Ertel's training guide. It is so important. Do not fail on following the guide and just think doing a few, like, 10, 15-mile rides once a week or something up to the uh, event is going to do it for you. It will not. You will be suffering. Follow David Ertel's training guide. That is number one. Number one. So... Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully this is helpful to you. And again, leave a comment below and be sure to uh, subscribe. That helps out my channel a lot. And I'm really close to 3,000 subscribers. So it would be cool if you could uh, um, subscribe to the channel. So, all right? Take care, guys. And we'll see you on the road in Iowa.